so what are we up to today well we're outside and we're looking inside the back of my military trailer which if we come back a bit we can see at a distance now I'd hoped to convert this to a camper that can fold down so there's a few things that have happened that uh, you haven't seen at this stage um, namely getting all this timber cut so let's just go over the quick plan what we plan to do here this timber is going to make a frame that sits in here. We're going to have two sides that fold up and then this reinforcing bar here and this canvas will form the roof of my little camper um, or camper trailer. And then we'll have some tarps on the sides and either tarps or solid ends on each end. Not quite sure which yet and apologies about the wind here. So where was the first step that I started with? Well. The bit that I didn't get to film, because you know sometimes employees don't like being filmed, uh, was I went down to my local Bunnings shop and had them cut the timber for me, and I took this nice little sheet here, which they scribbled on each one as they cut them. They very much appreciated the cutting length. Now I've been designing this in AutoCAD for about the past six months, nearly the past year, on and off as I've had different ideas rolling around my head. Um, so the step I've got to go through next here is finding out which bits are which lengths and uh, marking them all and uh, we'll get on to the assembly uh, but because of the MS and or multiple sclerosis which is what I suffer from and the heat is being one of those triggers um, being the Australian summer or at least it's just almost the first of December um, it's also very hot so well it's hot enough at least that it's causing me problems everybody else thinks it's great uh, except it snowed in the mountains like two days ago. So yeah, there's some climate instability here. I think all over the world by the sound of things. Anyway, let's get on with uh, labelling all these timber lengths and figuring out how everything goes together. Alright, well I've got all the timber out and uh, because I've done a few tip runs and I've taken some timber and stuff in this, I probably need to peel all this out and uh, get it cleaned out with a hose first. Um, and this could be tricky because these are actually waterproof trailers. Uh, if you do them upright, like if you take a jerry can and attach to the pintle hitch here, uh, these will actually float. And uh, they even have boat bungs down here. So I'm gonna have to tip this at an angle, pull everything out, and we'll hose it out. Though it is a hot day, I might just leave the boat bungs in, fill it up and the apprentice and I and maybe the wife will have a bit of an impromptu pull. Alright, after an amount of time that I'm embarrassed to admit it took, uh, because I'm slower with the MS, that's going to be a common theme these days, so you probably have to get used to that. Anyway, I've got the trailer emptied out, I've got the back piece over there, I've got the hose here. I'm not sure if this camera is waterproof anymore, it got exposed to 40,000 milliwatts of infrared laser energy at one point. Um, but I think I've re-waterproofed it since then. Anyway, um, the water in this hose is quite hot at this point. Um, but we can do hose cam. <laughs> anyway, we're going to hose all this down. In the Aussie sun, this is going to probably dry out quite quickly. Um, and then I think I have some lanolin spray somewhere. And I'll give the... Uh, the rusty bits a bit of a spray try and keep the moisture off it in future but yeah I'll hose this out and we'll be back right so we've got some framework just tested out test fitted here this all dried out about 10 minutes flat it worked out pretty well um, I took some time to print a simplified version of my drawings uh, at least that's one part of the many parts of the drawing it's just a viewport in a uh, a sheet view or a layout view in AutoCAD. Now these bits are going to sit up level with these. Oh, I've got a finger in the way. Um, I'm sort of holding this at a difficult balance here. Uh, I can't talk and hold things at the same time it seems anymore. Uh, lesions on the brain, fun stuff. However, it looks like both my measurements and that of the guy cutting things for me at Bunnings was spot on. These have slotted in nicely which now means I can make an exception for this little piece here. I can mark out the position on all four corners and I can um, get in there and cut a notch out. But that might happen when it gets dark and cool. Um, I'm starting to lose my uh, 
control over my motor functions a little bit here. But yeah, anyway, it looks like it's going to go together relatively well. Alright, so the heat got too much for me. Uh, one leg decided to do funny things and drop out from under me, so frustratingly I've had to call it quits for a bit. But uh, I got some marking out done before we went back. And uh, when things cool off tonight, I'll come up with a way to notch out those uh, first four posts. Alright, so it's the next day. You can tell we live near an Ambo station. Um, so, another bottle of water later. I've done some cutting, as you can probably see in the back corner here, to get around uh, those little braces, the corner braces. Um, and we've got one side test fitted here. So uh, we'll keep plugging away at this, just at my own pace, until something happens. Well, my apprentice has decided to come and help. The frame is slowly starting to come together. Now I've put two screws in from the rear, two in from the front, and we're putting corner brackets in here just to help as well. And uh, probably a strap across the top here when we get it all sturdy. But uh, the general frame to hold it is going in alright. And uh, once we've got the uprights figured out, we'll be making some bed frames out here as well. But uh, yeah, my apprentice has come to help uh, grab brackets and screws and all the rest, so productivity may go up, but it might almost go down. We'll see what happens. Okay, so the weather's cooled off a bit, and I've taken to using hinges as cross braces. Literally because I've got quite literally 14 kilograms of these things. Um, and I've done the same thing up here. I've got to knock 80 mil off that, so it's not quite right. So we're making a little bit of progress today, and um, I've decided I'm going to put these inboard to make things look a little neater. My apprentice is still helping. I'm still using <laughs> the leftovers of these many kilograms of hinges that I've got. Instead of using nail boards and stuff like that, I'm using what I have. I've also got about a thousand of these Robertson screws. Oh, we have a casualty. Workplace injury, workplace injury and lost time, or LTI. All right. So yeah, we'll move on. As you probably see, I've got my hands full, but uh, my apprentice is actually being helpful today. So uh, yeah, let's move on. Bye -bye. So I've made a bit of progress. Um, this might look a little agricultural to the uh, uninitiated. The idea is that there's a slight taper between these two that is deliberate. I can drop the tube in here and locate it in that direction, and then I can drop it down into the bottom of this hinge. Yet again, another use for the excess glut of hinges that I have. But let's get this up and see how that tube fits. Right, so my apprentice has left for an appointment with a petting zoo. Meanwhile, I've had the time to uh, test the tube fitting up here. It's a little slack, but I might be able to fix that. So I've got two laterals to fit across these bits next. Across here and across to here. I've got to find a creative way in my box of bits to make that happen. But uh, we are starting to come together. Okay, so we're inside for a minute, and uh, I've got these uh, these uh, mini bolt locks, the window locks. Um, I've got the problem when I put these two beams on the top, I need them to locate on a peg, uh, but I need the peg to be retractable so that I can fold it down and this won't collide, because I've pushed my tolerances fairly close. So uh, these were at an extremely good price, so uh, I'm going to see if I can uh, get these to do the job. And they'll even lock in place and I can remove them and it's parts I can lose and keys I can lose as well. So it could make life very inconvenient. But you know what? I seem to have an affinity for that. So uh, let's get these uh, installed and see if we can get the rest of this uh, happening. Alright, so sorry about the wind guys. Not much I can do about that. But you can see how these pins work on the top here. So the idea is we can just drop them in like that and they hold in and I'll have some ropes or some guide wires just to firm everything up shortly but we're getting there all right so I had to address the racking problem I've used a couple of eye bolts here and I've just man done some cross bracing with some ratchet straps makes it easy to tighten up the next question I've got is whether I have accounted for the tolerance and the thickness of these when the whole thing packs up. 
so I will have to fold it up at some point and find out if that's going to be a problem but we have I put my hand up here and wriggle and stuff it's quite sturdy and firm now <laughs> sturdy and firm all right so we should have a fairly strengthy or uh, fairly strong structure it might be time to try the tarp out well we've got the tarp on the top at least um, so that fitted right I need to get some little eye hooks to uh, tether all the ropes down to or I might just do hockey straps from here to here like I'd originally planned we'll find out whatever works more conveniently I think the hockey straps might but it's also the more expensive option I need to buy some more ratchet straps <laughs> uh, I've realized how few I have left so all right um, I think I'll start working out how to put the tarp on the sides uh, my current idea originally was to staple it on the both sides permanently but I don't know how easy that is going to be to fold up so the other idea is if I permanently fix it along one end and then roll it up and tuck it in that might almost work I'll do some thinking so I've gone to pack everything up and I found that these eye hooks in that position are going to get in the way so I might move them down here or off to the side or something like that I'll come up with a way that stays out of the way I was just in the middle of relining all of this to avoid the clash I got an unfortunate visit from my neighbor it seems a mutual friend has died um, very unexpectedly actually so um, yeah I gotta stop having people die in the middle of projects but I think I'm gonna I might push on with this one I know I know Michael probably would have preferred that I do so but uh, I'm gonna need something to keep me distracted now all right guys this is gonna be a little bit more somber tone for the rest of this video I hope you don't mind all right so wind aside I've got everything packing up um, in the frame okay it looks like these pins won't need to be retracted the pins at the other end will sorry about the wind but um, those pins I can lock them in their lowered position so I don't lose them that's good and you'll see along here right up at the very end there there's an eye bolt um, that is stopping everything from packing down cleanly but there's still plenty of room to compensate for that and that will actually mean I can probably put canvas in between the two so we are making progress I've just got a little bit more thinking to do and I'm gonna go and buy some ratchet straps have some lunch and um, take some time to adjust to the loss of a good mate we're back and I got myself the cheapest and finest ratchet straps I could find and these are weird looking ones um, I think they're kind of glorified cam locks but I'm guessing they should do the job so um, anyway if they're cam locks they might be a little easier we'll see how they go for 20 bucks I can't be too worried it's a bit windy, but something I didn't plan for, this is too short. I'm going to probably have to attach my cross bracing down here instead. Not ideal, but I guess it'll still work. Alright, well this might be the end of another day for me. I'm getting wobbly on the feet again. Um, I haven't had much to put into this today, or much time, considering everything else that's happened. But, um, I've got the straps working they seem to work suitably well in that position not the greatest angle that I'd like to get but given the length of them they still do the job and the tarp I think will add a little bit of rigidity as well um, I probably need to attach it up the top there for the moment um, but uh, yeah basically what I'm gonna do very soon is just based on this one side uh, see if I can fold it down with the tarp in situ so test complete this is what I was really hoping would happen there'd be enough gap in here to shove my fingers and a couple of layers of tarp and the folding method works very well so basically we can just flip it all out over the side and we can pull this rope and pull it up it's gonna go up very easy so I so I can put the tarp on the other side now but I think the screw method I'm using I think I might put some washers under there just to help spread the uh, the load out so it doesn't tear out in the middle of the night 
So yeah, but overall it's going mostly to plan. Right, so it's no doubt windy on camera. My apprentice has figured out how to get in and out. We've got the canvas temporarily roped on the top until I find a better solution. Um, but I'm finding these reflective um, tarps actually doing a very good job. Um, I mean, they're not good for conducted heat, but reflected heat they're doing very well. We've got loads of room up here. All my tools still kicking around in the bottom. But we're going together relatively well. So, uh, yeah, mock test. I'm not sure if I'm going to go hard-sided or soft-sided on the ends now. Um, but we'll wing it. I'm pretty well done for a day. I think I'm going to have to push this into another day instead of trying to do my usual trick and push through one task in a whole day. I have to go slow these days and I have to remind myself of that. But yeah, my apprentice is having some fun here. Gee, I'm not sure which end I'm going to put the ladder on. I'm thinking uh, my apprentice is kind of dictating that for me. They're climbing up over the drawbar. Hello, apprentice. Yep, we're climbing up, so. Oh, if we wait a few minutes, she might make it all the way in. All right, you're on the drawbar. I had to raise that bar up a little bit so that it didn't clash with the hitch on the other side. But, um, so that might not be the front door anymore. It might be the door that I'm leaning through. But, um, we'll see how we go from here. And I think there's a stray shoelace I'll have to fix in a moment. Uh, two stray shoelaces to be exact. <laughs> Okay, well, we're in. I've got rubber flooring to add to this. Um, and we'll start making the bed bases one day soon, too. But yeah. <laughs> Alright, well, we're camping already, apparently. Alright. No worries. Well, I'm going to keep going. Alright, well, while it's too windy to do anything outside and too wet on the camper trail, I'm going to work on the TV problem. Now, I have this old... PC monitor slash digital TV here and uh, I'm going to see if I can make it work and run off 12 volts uh, which means opening it up. At the moment it runs off mains but uh, the plug goes in the wrong direction so I'm going to at least need to make it go in a right angle direction uh, so it can fit in the space I have available which will be um, probably 35 mil, uh, not a great amount uh, because that's the thickness of the wall and it needs to pack up inside that space. However, this is going on the rear wall, which will be in the lower half of the trailer, which means I'll probably have a little bit more room. I've also got to engineer a folding shelf because we will be running a CPAP machine uh, when we're on a powered site as well. So that or I'll have to engineer an inverter. So yeah, we'll get that working. And uh, at the moment I'm doing an auto tune to see if it actually still works. It's been out in the weather for a bit, so we'll see what happens. Okay, well, the TV's working. We've got ABC here at the moment, and some strange guy that's lost his arms. I think it's a documentary. But yeah, TV's gonna work. I wonder if I can feed it 12 volts. All right, we've got the back off the TV here. Um, that's a bit warm, I've just had it running certainly need to clean out anyway there's a bucket load of dust in here um so we've got our main logic and display board here and we have our power supply board which is a little warm but i've worked out this whole thing draws around about 35 watts not a great deal it is fluoro backlit but uh nothing too worrying if i can convert this to 12 volts it's going to be a pain in the ass if i have to run an inverter just to run a tv very lossy way of doing things so uh, I'm steering clear of the big high voltage power caps here because they're probably charged and can give me a bite. But I want to find out if at any point that in this circuit here that it drops it back to a low voltage that I can use a linear regulator to provide. So I'm going to have a bit of a look around and see what I can do with this board. I apologise for the background noise here. My apprentice has discovered the EverDrive 64 cartridge that she was supposed to wait until Christmas for. She's now having a blast, so it might go didn't it might go missing between now and Christmas. But uh, anyway, back to the task at hand. Up here, which we can see, is the listing for the outputs from the supplier. So we're seeing a 15 volts here now at one and a half amps for the main board. So for a start, I can't 
really push it. I've tried feeding that board at 12 volts. I didn't document that. I had a bit of an experiment with some test clips that won't fire up until it gets to about 14.8 volts. So it's very strict on the 15 volts. On top of that, there's two individual supplies, a, push, a positive 15 volts and a negative 15 volts in reference to ground. So it's a push-pull system, and that's probably done because of the way they drive the speakers. Um, so it doesn't look like I'm going to be easily able to convert this to 12 volts, not without a lot of mucking around. Um, unless I find a whole new supply board, which I'm not willing to do for this project. So we might just, uh, I do have a small inverter kicking around, but I might just run this only when we're at a powered site. Oh, I'm tired. So yeah, maybe later on I'll get a bigger battery and an inverter and a bigger solar panel and we'll muck around with that. But for now it'll be a powered site only thing. But I can set this up with a visa mount so it mounts to the wall. But anyway, I needed to get this open and give it a clean out, which is what I'm going to do now. And uh, we'll go from there. Um, partly because I think this has some touch sensing switches on there. And when they get full of dust from behind, they don't work properly. So we'll clean all that out. And uh, yeah, we'll see how we go from there. Okay, so about three days has passed. I've been a bit out of action and the weather's been against me. Uh, but I have my door frame in now and uh, I've got this hard sheet up and I'm starting to cut the door frame out. The bed frame is in, although I've had to remove one slat um, to compensate for one of the, uh, the latches I've got in the corner there. I'm yet to figure out how I'm going to fix the rest of that. Um, but I'll come up with something. I've been doing a bit of cleaning up in the floor. But yeah, the door frame's almost in. Once this door frame's in, I can really get underway. Um, and I can start putting some paint on. And then the weather won't be so much of a problem. I can work from inside here uh, once the weather changes. But uh, as you can probably see, the weather's not great today. There's a bit of clear sky there. Uh, and it looks like I get a bit more rain coming. So I might have to pack this up again. I'm getting about probably 10 to 15 minutes at a time to work on this in between rain. So... We'll see how we go. We'll keep plugging away. Windy as hell, but I now have a door frame. All right, or a, a portal to put a door in. Anyway, let's get working. I think I've got a bit of sanding to do on the edges here, but that might come after the fact because of the wind and the rain. Up to the point where I'm making the door frame, I've temporarily attached things with hinges and packers, which are falling out in the wind as everything falls over um, but that should give me a reliable measure so that the door can still open and close um, now crucially I'm going to make the door open outwards even though the hinges are facing inwards that's just for ease of access at the moment I'll put the hinges on the correct way when we do it but uh, we're getting there all right so I've got my door frame temporarily assembled with uh, angle brackets and uh, it's secured here just to keep the spacing correct for the time being uh, and fairly shortly I'll be putting some cross bracing in um, shoring the door up and then we'll put it on the hinges and put door latches and whatnot in and uh, yeah hopefully it should work reasonably well hopefully I had to make a, a quick little change up here I uh, shortcut slightly so I've had to put a packer in but it uh, should be alright once everything's assembled well, the door frame is on Swings in and out, more hinges used uh, atypically, and it opens inwards. Uh, originally it was intended to open outwards, uh, but for this bit in the way here, it gets in the problem. I might be able to fix that and then flip the door around. However, this does save the problem of opening the door and it getting caught by the wind and whipping open, uh, you know, and smacking somebody in the head. At least inwards it's opening up the shelter. Sorry about the wind, guys. But at least here, um, yeah, we can just sleep head up the other end. Um, but yeah, we're getting there, little bit by little bit. So I've just got to figure out what kind of door latch I'm going to use on here now. So uh, yeah, into the box from the hardware store. So I opted to go for a roller latch. And I haven't bothered to uh, recess that into the door frame. Uh, but I am having to recess this door frame here. Um, and I've done a bit of work with a pocket knife and a drill and uh, hopefully there's enough room to fit this in So uh, yeah, we should be doing pretty well 
but I'm going to keep going and uh, yeah, I can't film and do this on camera so you're going to have to deal with the cuts as they come. The spring catch is in. Just. <laughs> a little bit of space. I'll need to make a stopper here. But I'm going to put pad bolts on the inside and outside. I'll just repeat that because of the wind. I'm going to put pad bolts on the inside and outside of this. So that should work and they'll act as a stopper to stop it going too far past its zero mark. But we have a good functioning door. Okay, I'm happy. Well, it's been windy for about the last week. I haven't been able to put this up and continue with it. Uh, today is still windy and overcast, but not nearly as much as it has been. I got up early this morning as the wind generally picks up in the afternoon. So I've just managed to finish cut this sheet or cutting this sheet uh, for the rear door. I was planning to install the window before I screwed this sheet on. However, given the conditions, I want to get this up uh, and then I can work on it from inside with the window uh, and figure all that out at a later date. But uh, I need to get this up so that the wind doesn't tear this off. Although there's about 100 screws in there, so I think it's not going to tear off in a hurry. But you know, I don't want to take chances. I also need to figure out how to uh, cover up this. I think I'm going to use some rubber stripping or maybe some canvas. I'll come up with something anyway, but uh, that's something I do need to figure out. Anyway, for now, I'm going to get this screwed on. I bought myself a uh, Christmas present on the way. Tried to repair a chair with this last night and it flipped the entire chair over. So uh, certainly a lot more torque than my super cheap auto special. But anyway, let's get going. Okay, so that sheet's mostly on, but minor design flaw. I can't open the door and fold this up because the door opens inwards. So I'll either have to change the door, which I means I need to change the way all of that works, or I've got to drill a hole through here with one of these and attach a rope. Okay, so that wall is up. Still got a couple things to attach yet, namely up in that top corner. And I realize there's a big dirty patch on the timber. So I guess I'm going to be painting over that. Um, something got spilled on it at some stage. I thought I'd picked off a clean sheet. Apparently I didn't. Um, the next step later on will be to move these cross bracing up and out of the way of the beds. And uh, I have an old stretcher I think might get retrofitted into this side. Hopefully so we can uh, fold it up and out of the way. But uh, yeah, anyway, I need to find some more of my screws that I've dropped all over the floor. I dropped a box of a thousand screws. So yeah, I'll have to find some more of them. And I've got another hinge to put on wrong. This whole video is about how to put hinges on wrong. Um, and yeah, but we're getting there. And then the window will come in, but I think I'll paint first, then I'll put the window in. So I want to get some paint on it today. Uh, just then I can have it up in all weather conditions then. I don't have to worry about the water soaking into it. Um, but yeah, I still have to take things slowly. Multiple sclerosis and all that jazz I've probably mentioned a million times by now. So uh, yeah, we'll get cracking and then I might have a bit of a clean up and then put some rubber flooring in. I just thought I'd give you a quick walk around about how it's looking so far. Got the sides all folded up. I've got the door working. I need to put a door handle on it. But yeah, it's all happening rather well. It's going to get some paint soon. But yeah, I've got to fix that and I need to come up with a system for this cab. But it's all looking good. Alright, so I've got the tarp on the side here neatened up a little bit. And I think I'm going to run a skirt around here. Sorry about the wind, guys. Pretty hard to deal with that. But yeah, I'll move inside here. I've got the tarp sorted out on both sides so the water's not going to flow in. Um, it's holding up pretty well in the wind. I think I might leave it up in this wind a little bit and see how it survives. If it tears apart, then I'll rethink how the tarps are on. It's probably better that during setup than uh, out in the field. So uh, yeah, we'll leave it go for a bit. I think it's breakfast time. <laughs> 